for quite some time and probably still today, uh, a lot of people use the MD5 function in PHP to hash a password that they were storing in a database. What they would then do is hash the value a user gave and they would compare it to that value in the database in order to authenticate them. So from a password checking point of view, that would always work. It would be fine. It would actually log a user in. However, the problem arises is if anyone got access to your database. So we're not actually going to be working with a database in this video, but I am going to demonstrate cracking an MD5 hashed password. So let's take a look at the traditional approach first of all. So we would use the MD5 function and whatever password the user gave when they registered, we would add that in here. So for example, I love cats 33. You might think mm, this is a fairly secure password. You've got a number in there. Uh, you could add some extra characters in here too. And that would produce the following hash. So when a user re-entered that password, we would hash it. It would equal this value and we could check it. Now let's head over to a website like CrackStation. There are loads of password crackers, uh, kind of online password crackers. And I'm going to go and paste this in here and I'm going to just fill this out and we're going to crack that. And you can see here that what that's actually done is it's given us our original password. It's looked this up in a dictionary and it has fully matched that password. So if a user or an attacker were to ever get access to your database, they could potentially find out a user's actual password. And that doesn't only affect your site. They could use that password elsewhere as well, for example, on their email account. And therefore, an attacker may have access to their other services as well. So it's extremely um, problematic if someone did access your database. If they access your database and you had a secure hash, it wouldn't matter as much. So what we're going to be looking at now is the proper way to generate and verify passwords within PHP. So we're going to be looking at the PHP password hashing API. And this is available uh, as of PHP 5.5. So if you're not up to date with your PHP version, either locally on, or on your host, you should definitely do something about this so you can use this if you are authenticating users. So let's take a look at using the password hashing API. And we're going to look specifically first actually hashing a password and we'll look at verifying one in a moment. So I'm just going to echo out the result of this, but ideally what you'd do is you'd pass the plain text string into this function, store it in your database, and you can verify it later on. So we're going to use the password hash function. We're going to pass a password into here. So for example, I love cats 33. Let's take a look at the PHP manual and see what other options we can pass in here, which are the arguments. So the next is an algorithm. So we can either use password default or password bcrypt. Now password default is a constant which may change. So what we're going to do is we're going to store this as 255 characters in our database um, or more, it doesn't really matter, but this would allow for any longer passwords as you update your PHP version or any longer hashes to be um, you know, not truncated if you have too small a column value. So let's pop that constant in there. And lastly, and, what, and kind of interestingly, we have this options array. So within the options array, uh, we can provide a salt, but there's a warning here that's been deprecated as of PHP 7 and a cost, which is what we're interested in just now. So the cost is the basically the processing cost of actually generating our hash. So we can say, well, we want it to be 10. We want it to be 20 if we know that that's not going to slow things down too much. But basically, the higher the value, the less likely this is to be brute forced in any way or cracked in any way. So I'm just going to choose 12 for now. You will see a slight delay on the page, but I'll let you tweak this to whatever is sensible for you. And let's go ahead and refresh now and see the difference. So you can see that this is slightly longer and there are actually separate components to this. And we can see this over on this image just here. So we have the algorithm that's being used. We have the algorithm options. In this case, it's the cost. You can see that just here. So this is the algorithm used. This is the cost. We've set that to 12. We also have a salt and a hash password. So there's no need to salt these. 
And salting is the process of adding on additional data, which makes it harder to do a dictionary lookup. Either way now, we have a much more securely hashed password, which we can then store in our database. So this is the value that you would go ahead and store for a user when they registered an account. Now, what do we do about actually checking if a password matches? Now I'm gonna copy this and I'm gonna paste it into my text editor. And I'm gonna assume that this value came from my database. We're not gonna hook everything up to actually authenticate a user, but this is a stored value in a database. So let's say the user provides the password cats. We know that this hash is I love cats 33, but the user or, or the submitted password, let's call this, is just cats. Obviously this doesn't match. So one, you're registering a user, we generate this hash, which is stored, but now what about when we actually sign a user in? Well, in this case, what we need to do is use the password verify function. We pass in the actual password that the user's given and we supply a hash. So let's go ahead and check this out then. In this case, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna do a var dump on result and result is going to be password verify. Remember we type in the user submitted password and we type in the hash. So this is the value that would come from the form when the user wants to log in. And this is the value in the database, however you're pulling that out. And by var dumping this, we'll either get a true or a false value. You can see here, we get a false value, obviously because cats here doesn't match I love cats 33. So I'm gonna say I love cats 33. I'm gonna go ahead and refresh. And you can see here, we get true. So once you've pulled down the user's password from the database, uh, assuming you'd match them via their username or their email, you would already have this stored and you can just do a quick comparison on these. And it's a lot more secure than coming up with any kind of way to hash a password yourself. It's so easy to use. You've just got two functions that you need to remember, password hash and password verify. And that is pretty much it. PHP have made it really easy with this password hashing API to allow you to generate a hash and then verify a hash that's coming from a database. In this way, obviously, if your database was broken into, these values are much, much, much harder to crack.